Let's talk housing. Will it be a monster spring for housing? Home prices rising at the fastest pace since 2006, and new home sales had the best consecutive two months since 2008. But could restrictive lending by the banks and bargain hunting by the buyers derail this recovery? Let's take a deeper dive into housing with Danny Babb, the CEO of the Babb Group, a real estate consulting firm representing more than $5 billion in investor dollars. She also works as a consultant for the National Association of Realtors. Danny, great to have you with us. Thank you. Nice to be here. Uh, so will we see a hiccup in this Recovery. I think we will. Um, we have several factors coming uh, happening at one time. First of all, we have buyers that are looking for bargains. Obviously, they're worried about interest rates going up, and they want to get into the market while they think the prices are still cheap. We have sellers that don't want to release homes out onto the market yet um, because they think they can still get higher price for them, uh, which is def decreasing inventory and increasing prices. And then we have investors who are out there buying like crazy, trying to buy in bulk and eating up inventory. All right. So when you're talking to your investors, the holders of these five billion dollars, what is the message that you? tell them in terms of how they can invest to take advantage of this market dynamic? Well, they can no longer buy in bulk. We just do not see that out there anymore. Pocket listings, off, uh, off MLS listings, um, we're telling them to stay away from the five areas that have the, the largest amount of delinquencies that are potentially going to, to going to hit the market in the next year or so. So so where do you think we are a year from now? Ooh, the market? A year from now, I think uh, we will start hey, to Schiller see prices stabilize. Yeah, I do. Um, I, we are, we're seeing really high numbers. We've got Phoenix and Las Vegas, 23 and 15 percent increases, mm -hmm. what sort of job numbers are going to be able to support that? We don't have that out there right now. But what if the Fed keeps the interest rates as benign as they are now? Mm -hmm. You don't think that that's adding some kind of artificial buoyancy to the market? I think it is. I think investors are also artificially increasing the market um, as they're bringing in more demand. They're bringing up prices as well. I do think that's a problem. And I think in the next year from now, or year from now, we will start to see prices stabilize. And uh, we're not going to see these huge gains. Like we've had Atlanta and Dallas have the highest ever on record. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree that housing is like a $17 trillion market? <laughs> wouldn't you agree that it very rarely, at least historically, stops and starts on a dime <laughs> and it moves in glacial long-term trends and that once a nascent trend gets started, it's almost never stopped in its tracks by something like uh, a few banks dumping some inventory? And wouldn't you also agree the, invent the shadow inventory argument it's kind of stale at this point. We've been hearing it for five years. Is she under oath? That was like pretty good. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. right. It's a cross examination there. <laughs> no, I, I, I do. I mean, you have a really, really good point. The 2.3 million homes is a lot. That would increase our inventory to 4. Point, from 4.2 months to over one year. I think that will have a substantial impact. However, to your point, banks are now processing short sales faster than they have ever done. They're more efficient and they're, they're faster at it, which will prevent some of those from hitting the market. Last question, Danny, and, and you alluded to this, the notion of the investor step in and buying in bulk, all these funds being started to invest lots of dollars into real estate. Yeah. What is the impact? Because it seems like all the funds are starting up now. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why they're all starting up now. And it seems like maybe on the other side, they'll all exit at the same time. That is a huge concern I have. Talking one year out, talking two to three years out, right. I have a big concern about that. When all of these homes people are buying now are going to hit the market at one time, when we have Flip 2.0 prior to the bubble, and, um, and all of Can't these... they be held and rented out as, as a source of income? Isn't that why sure. these funds are starting? up though? Yes, and, and many of them are. However, when and we've had rental prices go up about 5% year over year, but when that Sucks. backs off a bit and, and all of this inventory hits the market at one time and we start to see that slow, what's the incentive for the investor to do that? I don't see well, it. Professor Schiller is on your side. You know, He commented earlier today about yeah. this and saying that it's artificial. Mm -hmm. We're at Skybridge on the other side. We sort of think that the trend is going to stay uh, and even though I'm not a lawyer like Josh, I do think that there's going to be an improvement over the next two or three years. But mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear your thoughts. I mean, it's certainly something that people have it's to look at. Definitely a contrarian call. Yeah. So. It's an interesting yeah. contrarian call. Danny, thanks Thank for coming you. by. I hope you're exactly. wrong, though, Danny. That's well, the only thing I'm saying. For my investments, I hope so I'm, I'm along a lot of mortgage-backed <laughs> securities. So Danny Babb of the Babb Group. Coming up next on